Hi Astro Addicts, in this video I want to show you a quick tip on how to improve your editing in Photoshop. You may have seen me using this technique before, but I realized that I never did a full video about it on the channel. So let's talk about the Astronomy Tools Action Set for Photoshop. An action set is basically a list of instructions for Photoshop to perform, to make many steps in a short amount of time. If you want to make these processing steps by yourself, you can of course do that, but it will take a tremendous amount of time because sometimes hundreds of steps are performed in split seconds with these action sets. So the first thing you have to do is to purchase and download astronomy tools. The link is of course in the description. It right now costs about 22 US dollars. And I also believe they have lots of different types of action sets and tools on their website. And $22 for some actions might seem expensive, but if you consider getting telescopes for thousands of dollars and mounts, something like this, which will really improve your editing, which is basically the most vital part of the entire process, it doesn't seem that much in this case. After you downloaded the set, you have, I think, four files to work with. Save them on your hard drive and switch to Photoshop. Right here, I have an almost recent image loaded. This is Andromeda Galaxy, straight out of APP, my stacking software. It's been stretched and color calibrated, nothing else. And I now want to edit this image further with the action sets. But first, we need to load them. We go into Window and actions you can also press alt and f9 and you have the window over here now we'll click on this button on the top right right next to the double arrow and click on load actions i'm already in the folder where i saved these and i will use the version 1.6 for photoshop creative cloud if you have older versions you can choose those as well and maybe they will have some adaptions in further updates load and we will have a bunch of things over here now let's undock this and put it somewhere else somewhere convenient close this all right you see many things on this list and most of the time it's best or recommended at least to try out each of them and see what they do how they do it and if you like the result and that is why I will go over only a few of these, which I use the most, because most of them are pretty self-explanatory, like soft color gradient removal up here. It's a color gradient removal that's not that strong. Sometimes they perform better on some images and sometimes not as good, and you need to find the balance of what you like. And now let's choose a few of them. The first thing I usually do after stretching is some noise reduction, and for that we have two options right here. We have deep space noise reduction and space noise reduction. Let's see what they do. I will click on space noise reduction and click on the play button. You see it applies a mask and going through many different steps. And sometimes this goes in a split second and sometimes these can take multiple minutes, up to 10 minutes on some of those. Let's look at the result. Did you see anything changing? I don't think so. So let's go for the first tip. I found out what we can do. We can press Ctrl Z or Z and a new layer appears which is called After Action which is actually the image with the new action applied. We can now turn it on and off to see maybe a difference. Let's zoom in. Maybe in the background here. On, off, on, off. Did anything change? I don't think so. Let's look at the galaxy. On, off. There is noise reduction. I hope you see it in the recording. We can see noise reduction in the galaxy. Space noise reduction masks the bright objects and applies noise reduction only to them. So let's delete this. And deep space noise reduction does the exact opposite. It goes for the background and performs noise reduction on that. And I think this mask is too bright. I think I will have to adjust the levels and curves first, yes. Sometimes these scripts will run into errors and you will just have to press Ctrl Z and try again. 
Most of the time the errors occur because you don't have a layer selected or because you have a mask selected. Delete the aft direction and I will adjust really quick the levels, make the image a bit darker. All right. Photoshop Astro Processing Hot Tip. Control, Alt, Shift and E to print everything visible on top. And now we work with this. Deep Space, North Reduction and Go. Now the mask looks way better. And of course this mask will be inverted to perform things only on the background. And if you maybe click on these, on the arrows, you can see how many steps are taken in each individual action. Performing all of that by hand will take just way too much time. Let's zoom in, press Ctrl Z to make it appear. Very slight noise reduction. Almost not, li almost not visible, let's be honest. But I guess this image is pretty unnoisy as it is. The camera is amazing and I think these are 3 to 4 hours of exposure time. Alright, you can of course rename this, for example Deep Space Noise Reduction and work on here. And maybe you can trace back if you don't like any changes you did. The next few steps, select brighter stars is self-explanatory just as make stars smaller. Less crunchy, more fuzzy also is on the stars to make them look more natural if they are too small. Color blot reduction, of course. Banding noise reduction for most DSLRs. If you see banding in your dark frames, you can reduce this. Increase star color, reduce halos, self explanatory. And the most interesting things in here are these three steps. Local Contrast Enhancement, Lighten Only DSO, and Enhance DSO. Let's start with Local Contrast Enhancement and the next tip you should know when using these sets. This can take some time, so I will skip the process. And here it is. Do we see a difference? Ctrl Z, zoom in. Yes, there is a difference. You see more contrast has been generated in the areas where the galaxy is, and also around the stars. Let's zoom in further. And if you think that this change is too drastic, too much, there is one trick you can do. You can decrease the opacity of the F direction. So maybe, if you don't know what to choose here, it's recommended to go in third steps, so either 33 or 66%, and leave it at that. And if you did this, you need to perform the old action and stamp the visible on top. Now, what else can we do to this image? I would like it to pop a little bit more. We could choose for that Lighten DSO and Dimmer Stars. It does exactly what it says. And Enhance DSO and Reduce Stars also. These two are very powerful, let's say. They usually need to be toned down with the Opacity Slider. And I will not perform them right now because they will take a lot of time. This image is a drizzled 26 megapixel image, so this is 110 megapixel image, which is insane, this is gigantic. This could be an awesome poster if I got the color to work, because I already know the color in the galaxy looks awful. I edited this earlier, just to show you. This could look nice, but I don't like, I really don't like the color which this galaxy is showing right now. I think the moon was too bright for the L-Pro filter which I used. All the other tools are very easy to use and self-explanatory. You should of course try them out on your own and find what you like. I only want to go through two more. When I started out with astrophotography and Photoshop and these actions, I sometimes used the astro frame, which you have to be careful, it flattens the image making your progress unretrievable. And yeah, hmm. On a postcard maybe, but not on the web. Delete this background layer. And I will just click this and run this and talk, talk above it. When I started out, I tried to make these images, I tried to leave a signature of mine on the image without it being too apparent, without people realizing. And I went for the custom star diffraction spikes. 
But I quickly threw that idea overboard because it looked unnatural and I really like the the image being scientifically correct if you want so, but it re really represents what's there and what I did. So adding these spikes in post, it's a personal preference. I don't like it anymore. You see four options, tiny, small, medium and fat. Tiny will make these diffraction spikes on almost all the stars and fat only on the brighter stars. And this also can take maybe two to three minutes. Let's skip that. And it's done. You can see some of these look pretty bad. We can of course press Ctrl Z and deactivate our image. And now we see the on top layer which has just been blended. We can go with the eraser and erase those which we don't like. And we can already do this on this image and just go with the eraser and get rid of these ones maybe or these ones. And if you want you can keep maybe two or three and as many as you like. And yeah, this has been the introduction of the Astronomy Tools action set. Try it out, see if you like it, adjust the values, try out each one and they will improve your editing Especially if you don't have that much editing experience with all these layers and stems and individual masks, for example. Those actions can really help you starting out and learning editing in Photoshop. Thank you so much for watching. If you like these little short tooltips videos, consider leaving a like and subscribing to this channel. I know there hasn't been a lot of content in the last two months, and the reasons for that the weather in Germany has been lousy. I think there's only rain above Germany and the heat wave everywhere else in Europe. And the other reasons, I've been incredibly busy with the university stuff. I'm going to have to make an internship soon. I'm going to have to move. I hope maybe I have a garden over there. I don't know. That would be a luxury, I guess. But I hope that I will be able to make at least some short videos like this in the future, in the next half year or so. And maybe I can get home at the weekends and use the backyard to do astrophotography. And as for me, my name is Tim, I'm an astro addict, I wish you clear skies and may the night be with us.